from an impossible quest that ends with a laugh to a journey that ends in a championship ring and some good news from areas from all around the country. Here's Stephanie Cerner with a look at everything that's streaming right now. If you're looking for some good news, head over to the KSET TV app, watch the latest episode of Something Good. It's a collaboration with KSET's five sister stations bringing you good things happening from around the country, including the story of a San Antonio man who was at the Stone Oak Methodist Hospital for 62 days before beating COVID-19. His lungs had failed, his kidneys had failed, he was on dialysis, he was on a ventilator. He wasn't supposed to make it uh, at all, and they jump-started his body three different times, and he's, he's here. You can download the KSET TV app onto most streaming devices. What time is it? My mentality was to go out and win at any cost. Jordan is the most talented player in the NBA by far. And in case you missed it on ESPN, the highly regarded documentary about the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan is now on Netflix. The Last Dance features 10 episodes and interviews with several icon NBA names. The kissing booth is open for business! Also on Netflix, The Kissing Booth 2, Joey King, Jacob L. Ordi, and Joel Courtney find more romance and friendship in this spirited sequel. But if you're looking for something that passes the Bechtel test, try Amazon's Radioactive. Rosamund Pike plays the Nobel winning scientist Marie Curie, whose discoveries changed the world. There is another element that's skewing the result. You think you found an undiscovered element? The film aims to dig deeper into the life of the legendary scientist. I remember the first time I came to Canada. You know, in America, when there's horrible weather, we cancel events. You guys kind of plan around them. Hey, you know how it's the coldest month of the year? What if we had a party outside? And if you need a laugh, Amazon Prime Video also has Jim Gaffigan's new two-part comedy special. The shows were filmed during Gaffigan's The Pale Tourist World Comedy Tour. The Emmy Award-winning comic embarked on a seemingly impossible quest to land in a country with no material, experience the culture and food, and then write and perform all new material, all in one visit. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. You know, usually Thursday on SA Live is Thirsty Thursday, but it looks to me like it's leaking over into Friday. Usually it's food, but today? Mm. Yeah, they've got a little libation or two over there. Mm. Uh, and that's taken center stage. Well, gonna... You know why? <laughs> it's one long happy hour because it's Friday, and it is National Tequila Day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so okay. we've got plenty of cocktails, but don't worry. We haven't forgotten about the kids. No, no, not cocktails for kids, but you know, it's a fun Friday on SA Live. <laughs> when you don't know what to choose, spin the wheel of margaritas. Not a kid lose. toy. Yes, this is not for the kids. We got three great recipes for you to make at home and where you can go get a spin. Also not for the kids, when you're looking for a sip and a snack, this weekend is also National Wine and Cheese Day, and we're showing you <laughs> how to make an easy tasting tray and putting our wine and cheese knowledge to the test. Really easy tasting <laughs> tray. All right, this one's for the kids. Back to school is coming up fast, and it's going to be a different kind of school year. What you should be shopping for and where to get some incredible deals on supplies. And, of course, the school year means a busier schedule, so you need all the help you can get, how you can transform dinner time with this easy freezer meal recipe. Plus, it's a Get Fit Friday and we're bringing in some expert help. A local personal trainer is showing you why you already have everything you need at home for a high calorie burning workout. His larger than life voice has gotten him national attention and now this local family is handling the sudden rise to fame of this young mariachi. And we're playing some fun games. And did we mention it's National Tequila <laughs> Day? We got some delicious uh, Food, cocktails, freebies, today, tomorrow, all, all around. So, yeah, hey. and we want to know, what was the first alcoholic drink you ever had? Tell us on social media, and you might see your answers on the show. Fun Friday, just a couple of minutes away. Did we mention National Tequila Day? <laughs> And we're still watching what's going on with Tropical Storm Hannah. We're expecting some rain chances over the weekend. That The heaviest of the rain is going to be uh, south of us there around Brownsville, Corpus Christi. But we still could see some uh, showers here in town. 
and the forecast calls for about a 60% chance of rain both Saturday and Sunday. Scattered Monday and more isolated stuff middle part of next week. Guys, looks refreshing. Thank you, Justin. Mike and Fiona spent about a minute, minute and a half telling us everything is coming up on SA Live, and all I remember is it's National Tequila Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. There might be a margarita up ahead. <laughs> Ooh, let's get to it. SA Live starts right now. Mention National Tequila Day three times. Hey, we are spinning the wheel of margaritas. <laughs> and those special effects in there. What kind of special cocktail can we get, and how can you take a spin? Plus, are your home workouts getting a little boring? We're bringing a personal trainer straight to you with tips for new ways to burn those calories. And he is a pint-sized performer with a larger-than-life voice. How this young San Antonio mariachi captured the national spotlight. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from the KSAT 12 studios, this is SA Live. Oh, hello. Ooh. Everyone, it is a happy Friday, and if ending the week wasn't good enough, it's National Tequila Day, so we might as well have an SA Live happy hour, which I mean, we are happy for the hour, yeah. typically. Yeah, right, every day. exactly, and especially Just when it's National Tequila Day, too. So. Extra pep in our step today. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm Mike Osterhage, and all of this cocktail talk has us thinking okay, what was your first alcoholic drink? We found a list of the 15 best drinks for first timers. Um, it's from the website Insider Monkey. Here's the top five. All right, number five, White Russian. Reminds me of college. Oh, <laughs> Seriously. so many stories. Scandalous, scandalous. <laughs> number four, Radler Beer, which is beer and lemonade. I'm, hmm. Number three, a screwdriver, which is vodka and orange juice. Number two, Bailey's Irish Cream on the rocks or in coffee. Really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And number one, best drink for first timers is a sidecar, which is a sweet cocktail made with cognac. Hmm. Okay. So we want to know, what was your first alcoholic drink? Tell us, tell us, tell us. What was Oh, am I going first? Okay. It was probably champagne when I was about, I don't know, eight. <laughs> Well, little, at, at Thanksgiving or Christmas yeah. dinner, you know, you get like the, the little, the teeny, teeny, tiny bit, you know, where you can cheers with the adults and then yeah. you pass out and you're Now, how about you, the regular, the first regular <laughs> cocktail that you liked? Mine was a <sighs> seven and seven. Oh, mine was actually a white Russian. See? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when, I, when I worked at a bar in college uh -huh. and those were, we, you would get two duty drinks afterwards. <laughs> I had white Russians all the time. Just so. No way. All right, so share your comments on social media and tag us at SA Live KSAT, and you might see your answer a little later on in the show. I know my mom's embarrassed. Yeah, like we said, it is <laughs> National <laughs> Tequila Day. Hi, Fiona's mom. And if that's not exciting enough for you, how about taking your chances at spinning the wheel of margaritas over there at the Mariachi Bar at Mitiera? Good afternoon, San Antonio. I'm Nestle coming to you from the Mariachi Bar here at Michiana Cafe. And happy National Tequila Day. Let's start off by telling you guys a little bit about what we're doing. We got the tequila wheel, the deliciousness of all margaritas, any margarita. It's gonna be $4 each. What you're gonna do is walk up, sit down at the table, ask your server or bartender, what kind of drink do I wanna drink today? You don't know? Spin the wheel, take a chance and try something new. What am I getting today? Looks like I'm dropping on a big red margarita. And how perfect is this? I'm actually gonna show you guys how to make it. Start off with some Jose Corvo tequila. You're gonna get some lime juice. Then don't forget the sweet and sour. Grab some ice, put it in there, give it a good shake. Once you've given it a good shake, guys, go ahead and strain it out. And then you can't forget the big red. Go ahead and pour that bad boy in gradually and drop that bad boy in. Now, most people order this frozen, but I'm making it for you guys on the rock, giving me something easy for you guys to make at home. All right, guys, now what I got for you is going to be a Mexican twist on a classic. So we're going to make a Mexican watermelon mojito for you today. And what I like to do before I go ahead and make any of my mojitos, I throw a little bit of extra mint in there just to add that extra flavor. Going to get some agave. Some sweet and sour. A little bit of cuatro. Lime juice to add a little bit of citrus to it. And then we can't forget the good stuff. We got the watermelon. And then for this, we're going to use Jose Corvo Tradicional. All right, what you're going to do is give it a good shake. 
Nice and smooth. So, we'll go ahead and top this bad boy off with lime. A couple mint leaves on top. And last but not least, we're gonna make something that's a summer classic. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a ranch water. So you're gonna go ahead and grab lime juice. We're gonna use Jose Corvo Blanco. And last but not least, top it off with some Coco Chico. And a lime wedge. So there you go, guys. You got three delicious drinks to make with us on Margarita Day. If you guys come out, we can make them for you. Spin the wheel, try something different. And this is going to be available here at Mi Tierra's Mariachi Bar all day. And we're also going to have these same drinks available right down the road up the highway at Mi Familia at the Rim. So guys, come on down, have some fun with us. All right, you can get those drinks at both Mi Tierra and Mi Familia, but only Mi Tierra in Market Square will have the Wheel of Margarita. Now, this weekend at Mi Familia at the Rim, they're going to have a full bar available for drive through including the special $2 margaritas. <laughs> all right, it's happening all day today, so don't miss out on the deal. And for more information on La Familia Cortez restaurants, go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, there are the ultimate pairings out there. Jam and bread, peanut butter and jelly, Pumpkin and Spice. Fiona and Mike. Aww. For sidekick. <laughs> and of course, Wine and Cheese. Yes, and tomorrow is National Wine and Cheese Day. You may remember from last year, but the website OriginalHouseWine.com combined cheese it crackers and their red blend into one package. Well, this year, as you can see, it's a combo pack of white cheddar Cheez-Its and their house wine rosé. Now, they went on sale yesterday afternoon and they already sold out. So we made our own version to help celebrate Wine and Cheese Day. Yes, indeed. So, and the nice thing about it was, because that thing was like 30 bucks. Twenty nine ninety nine. dollars yeah, okay. 30 bucks. This was the five liter thing, twelve ninety nine, something like that. You, a he box, went to Target. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a box of white cheddar. I mean, we're having a party for about, um, what, maybe $15 here, mm -hmm. something like that. And to really, Spare really no expense. class the thing up, <laughs> we did a charcuterie tray here and used Lunchables. Lunchables for it. <laughs> there we you go. We up the show every <laughs> chance we get. Im impress your friends. <laughs> okay, and you know, I think it's we're ready for a little wine and cheese trivia game, and we have a guest star on today's show to help us out. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin. Yes, yeah, <laughs> very exciting. I've always wanted to be a game show host, so this is very exciting to me. All right. We're going to do some trivia. Hey, you guys got two wine glasses mm -hmm. here, okay? For every answer you get right, you get to pour a little bit of wine in there. So, you know. Okay, at the end, we'll see yeah. who. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you gotta answer the questions right, though. This is the important <laughs> okay. part. All right, so Mike. Yes. First question's for you. Which state is a North American leader in the production of fortified fruit wines? California. Uh, <laughs> wrong. Oh, really? Yeah. I should know that cherry yeah, wine. They have that. That's so good. That, yeah. I should have known that. Northern Michigan with the cherry wine. You should have known that. So, do you drink when you don't get it right? So. <laughs> no, no, no. Not the rules. Okay. All right, Fiona, this one's for you. Okay. What cheese is known for having holes? Oh, seriously. <laughs> Swiss cheese. Oh, I can't believe yeah. I got that right. I got some wine in my glass. Okay. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right, Mac. Um, Mike. <laughs> or Mac. Or Mac, either way. Uh, pin conning cheese is aged semi hard and is a Colby style cheese. Where was it developed? Pin conning, Michigan. Been there many times. It's great. I'm, I'm kind of impressed, but yes, that's what I need to. Right up I-75, and Frankenmuth is right behind there, and that's the Christmas place. You can so. Four. Yes. Four, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a very I don't know how many of these I'm going to get right. I want to hedge my bets here. <laughs> okay, Fiona. Yes. What is your favorite wine? Oh, Cab Sab. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well Yay for me! <laughs> See, this is what happens when, when I come up with Gee, questions. Gee, I think I've been set up. <laughs> these are great questions. All right, Mike. Yes. Which wine trail is considered to be the Napa Valley of the Midwest? Which wine trail? That's right. Uh, I'll say Paw Paw. Uh, Michigan. Paw Paw, Michigan? No. no Lake Michigan Shore. Uh, well, Lake Paw Paw is near Lake Michigan. Uh, Lake Michigan Shoreline. Technicality. 
It's over there by Kalamazoo and all that. I think the judges said no. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Michigan Shore Wine Trail is the correct answer. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. Close. Okay, we Fiona. Yes. College. What city is best known for cheeseheads? <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> Green Bay. Yes. <laughs> Where you used to work. Where I used to work and live, yes. All right, Mike. What U.S. state produces the tenth most pounds of cheese per year? The tenth most pounds of cheese per year? Um, I'm going to go with the, and say Michigan. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's your next favorite state, Ohio. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Right. That's okay. You uh, got one pour in You got answer. one pour, and it was a healthy pour. That's why I did it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fiona. Last, what, one. last question. What is wine usually served in at a wine tasting? Um, a <laughs> wine glass? Yes! Oh, yes. Wow, all right. Woo! Well, cheers! Thank you, Justin, for, for helping Please out. your questions. <laughs> maybe, anyway, maybe not. Justin, Ladies and gentlemen, the Justin Horn. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. All right. Okay. Still ahead on SA Live, the school is coming around, the school year is coming around, and what you need is easy dinner. Check out this mom-friendly freezer meal recipe. But first, a different kind of school year needs the best back to school sales, what you need to be shopping for, and where you can get the best deals. It's next on SA Live. Well, whether it's a virtual or a classroom, the school year is headed our way fast, just weeks away. And lots of families, of course, still not, might not be 100% sure what it's going to look like and not sure what back to school shopping is going to look like. Shopping and Trends expert Scarra Skirball is here to help at least clear up the shopping questions and help us find those back to school deals. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for having me. Very nice to have you. Should people even do back to school shopping this year? Yeah, so at Retail Me Not, we know that in the month of July, people are planning to spend upwards of $532. And we also know that July is kind of the kickoff to the back to school shopping season. Now, to your point, what does back to school look like? The fact of the matter is that kids still need items to go back to school, whether they're social distancing at home and making sure that learning's happening in the home or the classroom. So kids need things like uh, computers or tablets. Maybe they need noise cancellation headphones or maybe the parents do. So speaking of sales, when can shoppers find the best deals on back to school items? So this weekend, actually, Retail Me Not is launching a mega savings event. So I know that a lot of people have been really cautious about spending money. And the fact of the matter is that they've been waiting to spend money, waiting for the good deals. And now is the weekend to take advantage of them. You're going to find over 100 deals and offers at some of your favorite stores that are going to help you get back into the summer spirit and even the fall spirit if you're looking for some back to learning essentials. So think shorts and electric electronics, apparel, shoes, even cosmetics at some of your favorite stores and up to 20% cash back in some instances. You touched on a little bit of this, you know, kids still need pencils and paper and backpacks even and computers. What are some of the, the kind of different items, I guess, that families are going to be looking for this year? So one of the sales that I'm really, one of the deals I'm really excited about this year for the mega savings event is Apple. If you buy an iPad or a Mac for college or high school, of course, you're going to get AirPods from Apple. So we rarely see Apple offering any incentives. So that's really something that I'm looking forward to. Other opportunities to save for back to school may see up to 12% cash back. Now think about cosmetics, teenagers, for example, Tarte Cosmetics had some really great deals and Elf Cosmetics, a lot of bang for your buck, you're going to get up to 20% cash back there as well. So where's the best place to find some of these deals? Really easy. Go to megasavingsevent.com. So like I said, it's Retail Me Not's exclusive four days of savings starting Thursday, and it'll go through Sunday. So that's awesome. And again, it's just a great way to stock up on those summer essentials that you might not have felt comfortable buying. So people always love a good sale, but then there's always those little kind of tricks, I guess, to maximize the savings. How do you do that? 
So one insider tip that I love to share with people is stacking your savings. So you're going to find lots of deals this weekend. So you're going to take those coupon codes. If you're shopping online, take advantage of free shipping. And then you want to continue to stack your savings. So cash back is a really great opportunity to save money. If you're not taking advantage of it, please, please look into it. Sign up for an account on Retail Me Not. It's free. Essentially, you are earning money every time you spend money. So when we talk about those 20% cash back deals, a lot of times you're just going to see them for 3%, 5%. But this weekend, they're up 20% cash back. That's a big opportunity to save, especially when you're spending a lot on some of these things that you might not have purchased in the past. Wow, that's a great idea. I love that one. Thank you. Great tips. Thank you very much, Sarah. So at least we can still depend on all those back to school sales. They'll still be out there and all the great deals. That's right. Thank you so much for having me. Good chatting with you. Still ahead on SA Live, celebrate National Tequila Day. Woohoo! All weekend long. Oh, all weekend long, too. Hey, we're yeah. eating down the tacos, <laughs> drinks, and a whole lot more. And next is a brand new take on the chicken dinner. Try this recipe and feed your family for days. It's straight ahead on SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. She's all about cooking made easy. Erin Chase from Five Dollar Dinners helps build meal plans and offers thousands of recipes on her website. And today she is showing us how to save time during the week with a really smart and delicious freezer meal recipe. Take a look. Today we are going to be working on a honey mustard chicken. It is a sauce that you can make with ingredients you probably already have in your pantry. So what you're going to need to do is grab the chicken when you can find it at your store and then turn it into freezer meals. What you don't want to happen is you get that precious chicken, you find it finally at the store and then you let it sit in your fridge and you don't put it to you. So go ahead and make it up into a couple different freezer meal options. I'm going to share one with you here today and put it into your freezer. You can then have it. Like I said, on that night you might have gone out for dinner, you can make this at home. This honey mustard chicken is chicken breast. You could do a mixture of chicken breasts and chicken thighs uh, along with a homemade honey Dijon and some simple spices. We're just gonna whisk this up into our bowl. And this is how I like to do freezer meals. I like to prep the ingredients first. We're gonna do equal parts. This is Dijon mustard, so this will have a little bit more punch and tang. You could use yellow mustard. You could use spicy brown mustard. Either of the three mustards is gonna work. And we're gonna add equal amounts of honey. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio of the mustard and the honey. And then I'm gonna sprinkle in garlic powder and some minced dried onions. You could do a diced red or a chopped red onion or a chopped white onion, but I like to use the minced dried onions. They're just so much easier, especially right now when we're trying to be as fast and as efficient as possible in the kitchen. So this is just the chicken in the sauce. So we have the sauce ready. So the next step is gonna to be to add the chicken into the bags. In this case, I'm gonna add two chicken breasts into each bag. With this chicken, I would say that two chicken breasts could easily feed four people. We're going to slow cook this and then shred it up and we can serve it a multiple different ways from there. So what we're gonna do is just do half of our sauce poured right into each bag. And we love these handy dandy bag holders because they make it easy to do this. You can find them in our shop. So this honey mustard chicken is what I like to call a meal starter. It is just the meat and the sauce going into the freezer. And we can then cook it a number of different ways. I mentioned you could slow cook it and then shred it. You could also um, transfer them after you thaw them into a baking dish. And you could bake this honey mustard chicken. There are a number of different, you could even slice it up after it's been frozen and do it in the skillet. You could grill this as well. There are a number of different ways that you can cook this. So that's why I like to call this sort of a meal starter. 
My favorite way to cook honey mustard chicken is to slow cook it and then shred it for sandwiches. So how we would do that is we would take it out of the freezer. It's gonna be frozen. You're gonna put it in a bowl of room temperature water for a couple of minutes just to loosen the chicken and the sauce from the bag and then you can add it directly into the slow cooker. When it is frozen, as long as you're cooking it on low for eight hours, there will be plenty of time for the chicken to defrost and cook in the slow cooker. Once it's done cooking, you can just shred it up and serve it onto your sandwiches. Hopefully freezer meals can be an easy option for you in getting dinner on the table for your family as we are eating at home more often these days. You can get this recipe and many more on my freezer cooking website, myfreezeeasy.com. All right, well, you can find recipes, tips, and tricks on Erin's website, and you can find a link to hers on ours. And when she's been down there at Market Square before, all the stuff she makes is really tasty, too. So just go to salive.com and, of course, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, still ahead on the show, need to switch up your at-home workout. We're bringing in a personal trainer to give you new tricks to transform your home into a gym. Plus, can you guess the cocktail? We're testing your bar trivia and showing you how to enjoy tequila day all day long. Sounds like a party to me. It's next on SA Live, but right now, why UV lighting is important in your AC system with KSAT local expert, John Wayne Service Company. Hi, I'm Jeff King with John Wayne Service Company. I'm here today to talk to you about UV lighting. We install UV lighting in air conditioning systems to protect against microbial growth and other microorganisms that can grow inside your air conditioner. It'll protect the equipment as well as protect your indoor air quality. The reason you would want UV lighting inside of your air conditioner is because it's a great environment for microorganisms to grow. It's a dark, damp environment and uh, your air filter can't keep everything out. So some spores can land on your equipment, start growing, restrict the airflow as well as contaminate your air. These can be installed in any air conditioning system. We would want to come out and evaluate where to install it, where you would have uh, the areas that need to be sanitized, and uh, we can typically install them on any system. We can usually have one of these installed in less than an hour. You may not notice it right away, but uh, after years of use without one, you would certainly usually get microbial growth inside that uh, you know, over time would get worse and worse and worse. In fact, most of the air conditioners I've opened up that don't have one are just filled with microbial growth. These will prevent that. This product is usually used to sanitize the inside of your air conditioner to prevent microbial growth. The longer you can keep your system clean, the longer it'll last. Once again, I'm Jeff with John Wayne Service Company. And for more information on ultraviolet lighting, contact us at johnwayne.com. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, it is National Tequila Day, and the Squeeze Box wants you to celebrate for more than just one day. They're offering meals and cocktails to go today and tomorrow. They were kind enough to share uh, with us some of those today. Okay, and let's see. So we have four crispy pork belly tacos. We only have two of them right here. We have two. Okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you're going to try that. Okay, then we've got some margarita pouches mm -hmm. with El Tequilleno Tequila. Beer specials with free twang products, okay, and frozen Ooh. mangonadas with el tequilleno, which we don't have here, okay? Probably in the freezer somewhere. Probably, so. okay. Tomorrow they're going to have cheese enchilada kit to bake at home, beach cruiser pouches, frozen palomas, more mm. beer specials, and free twang pot products. Mm. Okay, and we're lucky enough to have lots of cocktails here on SA Live, so we're putting our cocktail knowledge to the test. Yay, we're going to tell the, we're going to show the ingredients, okay, and then we have to guess the cocktail based on the ingredients, okay? Okay, right. what cocktail contains tequila, orange juice, and grenadine? Tequila sunrise, That's what orange I would say. juice, yeah. right? Eh? And eh? the winner is, I think that's it. And it was also a great it. movie, too. Mel um, Gibson and Michelle Pfeiffer. Ah. Sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you would bring up movie trivia. Okay. All right. What cocktail contains gin, lime juice, and sugar? And we were trying to figure mm -hmm. this out, and I think we said it is a gimlet. Um, gimlet. Gin, lime juice, you should. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. And so... All right, what is made with white rum, club soda, lime juice, and mint? I don't, I don't know this one. White rum, white rum club soda, club lime soda, juice, mint. Lime juice, 
and mint. Uh, is rum it a, Collins? Uh, no, no. It's a, oh, you got it! Oh, oh wait. Did wait, we what get was it right it? or did we get it wrong? Both. Oh, hey, okay. it's both. Okay, they speak to us. Okay. Uh, what's made with bourbon or whiskey, sweet vermouth, and bitters? Ooh, yes. Oh, uh, the Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Manhattan. And usually put a cherry in it, too. And if it's made with scotch, it's called a Rob Roy. Look at you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what's made with brandy, triple sec, and lemon juice? I, I don't think it's a brandy Alexander, because isn't brandy Alexander made with um, egg whites? Whipped up, I think. I don't know for sure. I'm I'll say sure. Brandy Alexander. Right, yeah. No, no. What is it? I don't know. We're not getting the answers here. Okay, last okay. but not least. All right. What is made with vodka, cranberry juice, lime juice, and triple sec? Well, for me, that's already too many ingredients after vodka. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> vodka, cranberry lot. juice, lime juice, and triple sec? Um, I'll say a firecracker just because it's got the cranberry juice in there. So. Okay. You know what uh, oh, Cosmopolitan. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. All right. What is made with rye whiskey, uh, absinthe, absinthe. bitters, and 12 lemon twists? Rye whiskey, uh, absinthe, bitters. Is that a, that's not a, um, uh, it's not a sign. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got the buzzer. What was that was one? It? What was it? The voice in our heads? Zazara? Zazara? Is that? It came in and out. Sorry. Zazara? Hard wrap. It's called a hard wrap? Oh, that's, what, that's the cue we're getting right now. Hey, don't forget to check out the squeeze box for your tequila. Hard rates. wrap! <laughs> and for more information, go to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. <laughs> He was only five when his big voice got him attention across the country. We take another look at this young San Antonian's wonderful talent. And next, beef up your workout with, when, with things at home. We're getting tips and tricks from a personal trainer. Don't go anywhere. Often and making more meals together has led some folks to succumb to what we've been calling the quarantine 15, give or take a few pounds. But exercise can become a habit for folks staying home. And joining me now is accomplished boxer, certified personal trainer, and fitness nutritionist, as well as co-founder of Skinny Buddha, Shaka the King. Hey there. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Now, just as in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. It's about body weight, body weight, body weight, right? Tell us about that. Yes, it is. Now, no matter where you are, your body is there with you. So you can always use your body as the resistance you need to get a workout in. You, know, you don't need dumbbells, you don't need bands, just use your body. What are some moves that folks can do uh, incorporating time, tempo, and intensity? Number one exercise is that squat. All you have to do is stand and squat, stand and squat. That's the number one exercise. Second, I would say is you can drop down to do a push-up. Or if you want to modify it, you can drop those knees down. Or you can throw your hands on the wall and you can do a wall push-up. Third one, you got to get on the floor. You got to do some sit-ups. So flat on your back, you got to work that core. Because if the core is tight and strong, then everything else will flow off of that. Now, a lot of things folks ha you know, have at home and at their disposal is a chair, right? And you say a chair can be your best friend. So many things that you can do with this here chair right here. You I mean, not just, not just sit and relax in it and binge watch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 we're not watching the TV. Right now we're watching your show, we're watching the TV. But otherwise, we can still do some movements to get that heart rate up and, and, and make it an active day, you know? So the, the, the chair is, is you can do everything from it's your, your height for a squat. So if you turn it sideways, so there you go. That's how far you know you have to squat down. So if I'm in front of it, I'm tapping right here and here, right? If I want to make it a little bit more explosive, I'm here and I'm jumping up. Or I can go to an upper body workout here, bend at the elbow, and I have my dips right here. Turn it around. 
I have my push up right here. I can go right here. I have my step up right here. If balance is my issue, I turn it around. Hands on the chair for balance. And I can do a squat here. I can do my do my leg raises. I can, I can do a whole bunch just with that support right here. So the chair is so versatile and everybody's got one in their house. Now tell us a little, a little bit about Skinny Buddha. Skinny Buddha, I'm a personal trainer. My partner is a chef. We met, we decided that, you know, you can't separate food and fitness. And she had goals, she wanted to lose a, a lot of weight. I said, you know what, let me make a program for you. And since you, you're a chef, you can cook and make it taste delicious. So then we opened up our gym. So we have a, we have food and we have fitness. And now we're, we're, since the pandemic, we're online, we're doing more virtual training also. All right, where can folks go for more information? Our website is myskinnybuddha.com. You can find us on there or on Instagram at Skinny Buddha Organic. Uh, Shaka the King, thank you so much for your time. See you later. Everybody move. Next on SA Live, this young boy swept across the nation with his beautiful voice, and he's from right here in San Antonio. Find out how it all got started straight ahead. Welcome back, everyone. Well, a couple of months ago, our Jen Tobias Trusky met five-year-old Mateo. His birthday serenade to his mom at Mi Tierra turned him into a young star on the rise. Jen shares how the mariachi magic has taken the Lopez family on quite the journey. It's a great story we want to share one more time. <laughs> People have told us before, don't rob him of his childhood. But define childhood. Why, what makes what makes us taking away from his childhood? He's singing. If a child likes to sing, then that's his childhood. If a kid likes to play baseball, then that's his childhood. So are we really taking it? No, we're doing what he likes to do. Just five years old, as you can see, his love for mariachi music is rooted in him. Yeah, he just sings his heart out, and it's crazy because I get nervous when I play. <laughs> and it's crazy that he's only five and he's not nervous at all. To hear somebody tell you that they listen to your song every night before they go to bed. Wow. I, it's amazing. That's where the passion comes in because he remembers my mom singing and dancing and around the music and then with Ariela's inspiration that she planted in, in her, in him to actually just follow in her footsteps. Something his parents believe is a gift from his grandfather. We really truly believe there's a part of my dad in him. The way he looks at us, the way he sometimes just gives us this book, and my mom has said it too from the very beginning, like, I see your dad looking at me through his eyes. Makes me feel good because because I sing in performances and stuff, and I go all over a river walk and stuff. For me, it was my kids that actually made me take pride in who I really am. I grew up in the middle of the West Side in San Antonio. So being that we were first generation Americans, I didn't know, I didn't know English at all until I got to school. So when we were old enough to come out and play with the other kids, we were basically called names. So, you know, we didn't want anything to do with Mexico or it's, it's music. Skipping a generation, sure, but Mateo is not skipping a beat. One serenade at Mi Tierra for his mother's birthday and this amazing little soul went viral. just to watch him and if you, if you watch the video you'll see that Mateo 
when he's singing to me, it's so heartfelt. And he even at one point gave me like a thumbs up, like, you know, I'm doing good, mom. Leading to so many bigger things. <laughs> a spot on an NBC show that features young talents. Mexico's Got Talent also reached out to him. When he gets up there and they ask him, where are you from? In Spanish, de donde eres? And he responds with San Antonio, Texas. Solo tu, solo tu te conoces, mi forma de sentir. You know, he'll make a fist and he'll put so much passion in it. And so he's doing what he truly loves to do. We'd have people in Mexico City come up to us and just, you know, hug him and, and tell him that he's the, the savior for, for the music. And to think back that I was so ashamed of it, to see somebody so small making such an impact. Some might even think a reincarnation of his grandfather. But I know he's living with what I said. And I know he's proud of that. And so am I. Is there anything else you'd like to learn? A uh, trumpet, a piano, a drum, a, a violin. There's so much more to come with him. And while he may branch out into the world, his roots are here in the Alamo City. Mateo in itself, it means a gift from God. For us, they lie. And he truly is that. I'm Jen Tobias Justin. God, that kid's great. I love it. Monday on SA Live. Have you been overdoing it with the summer treats? We have a great healthy swap for snack time that can also replace ingredients in your meals. Plus, the Fiesta Spirit is alive and well at the Witty Museum. We take you inside Fiesta Couture, behind the scene. Exhibit for look at the most glamorous night of Fiesta. That and more Monday at 1 on SA Live. Ah, yes, that first cocktail. What was it? Mm-hmm. Julianne says, Mine was also a white Russian, and she still loves them to this day. They are no idea they were so, not popular. Margarita, okay. my dad would always make them for the holidays, and I'm sure I got my first sip from him. <laughs> All yes. right, Carmen. <laughs> Another one? Nope. But yeah, white Russians at the uh, they were the, at the bar in uh, college. So you know the hey, rosé and the white cheddar cheese.